Hello my beautiful friends and welcome back to my channel. So guys today we're going to be talking all things feminine hygiene and I'm super excited for this video because I've got a lot of tips for you guys. I've got a lot of tips. I was going to try and narrow this down to like 10 tips or something like that but I've got so many that I think I'm just going to try and get through as many as I possibly can because I want to help my friends out as much as I possibly can. <laughs> so guys if you enjoy please don't forget to smash a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below if you haven't already and turn on the little bell so you get notified every time I upload because YouTube is being a bit difficult lately and videos aren't going into sub boxes so make sure you hit that little bell it would mean the whole 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 wide world to me we're just going to dive right on into this and talk all things feminine hygiene oh yes Oh yes. In my shaving down there video, a lot of people got really triggered and like annoyed that I kept calling it my vagina instead of my vulva. I am aware that my vagina is inside me and my vulva, like your vulva is what's on the outside. I am aware of that and I know like that's the correct terminology. But the only reason I say my vagina is because that's what a lot of people refer to it as. Most people call it their vagina, not their vulva. So that's why I kept saying my vagina instead of my vulva because there's a lot of people that would be like, what are you on about when I'm saying my vulva? So I just thought it was a lot easier to say vagina. So if I'm saying vagina in this video, don't get annoyed at me. I know it's my vulva, but it's just easier explained that way because that's what most people think of it as. Like most people, when they think vagina, that's what they think. Like they don't think, oh no, that's my vulva. My vagina's inside. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So yeah, I just want to clear that up in case you hear me same vagina. <laughs> so the first step I have for you guys is all about douching. So if you don't know what vaginal douching is, it's basically where you're putting anything up your vagina. So that could either be like the spray head of your shower and like you're spraying that up your vagina. In some countries they actually sell douches in shops and stuff. Like so it's like um, a solution with water and other chemicals mixed together and it comes in like a spray form and you can like spray it up your vagina. Basically douching is when you're inserting like anything up your vagina to try and clean it. A lot of females think that douching is actually so hygienic and you're cleaning yourself trying to get rid of odors and smells and stuff like that but douching is literally the worst thing you can do first of all like our vaginas are self-cleaning like they clean themselves like they don't need to be cleaned they do that job all by themselves so it's actually been scientifically proven that vaginal douching increases your risk of bacterial bacterial vaginosis by 1.2 times to 5.1 times so that's literally tripled your chances of getting bacterial vaginosis. And on the scarier side of things, it also actually increases your risk of getting cervical cancer. And that has also been scientifically proven. So douching is really one of the worst things you could be doing. You're actually doing a lot more damage to yourself than good. You know, you might be thinking you're only doing good to yourself, but it's actually really bad for you. So if you're somebody who's engaging in vaginal douching, I would highly recommend you stop because it ain't good for you, baby girl. It just ain't good for you. <laughs> so since we're on the topic of vaginal douching and cleaning our vaginas and you know trying to get rid of smells and stuff like that first of all I just want to say that every single female has a natural smell that's just the way it is like so no matter what you do you're never going to get rid of that natural smell because it's very natural and you're supposed to have a smell the only time you need to worry about your smell is if your smell changes and if your smell is like putting you off if your smell's making you gag it's making you feel like you actually want to get sick and um, if there's like a fishy odor off it you probably have an infection like like a yeast infection like trush, bacterial vaginosis, you might have a urine, urinary tract infection. There's so many kinds of infections that changes our smell. So don't be worried about having a smell, we all do. But if it's like a really off-putting smell, then you need to go to the doctor. So when it comes to washing our vaginas and like actually cleaning ourselves, as I said, um, our vaginas are self-cleaning. So we don't really have to wash down there. But um, you know, a lot of people do because it just makes us feel better about ourselves. But if you are washing down there, first of all, you need to make sure you're using something that's unscented because if things are scented that could very easily be throwing the pH balance of your vagina off and we really want to be avoiding this so either use like an unscented white soap bar like a dove soap bar that's unscented or else like a feminine wash like a feminine intimate wash that's actually for the area and um, a lot of the time these washes will also have like a pH balancing aspect in them so they will make sure that your ph balance is always the way it should be i actually use a feminine wash so this is feminelle refreshing intimate wash naturally ph balanced and soap free and this is actually from oriflame um but no i absolutely love this this is absolutely perfect so i would highly recommend getting yourself like an actual feminine hygiene wash or else an unscented soap bar so yes keep them vaginas all clean and pretty and yeah so the next tip i have for you guys is all about bad breath do you know them 
different days where no matter how many times you brush your teeth or put in mouthwash or eat chewing gum, you just seem to have this really bad taste in your mouth and you feel like every time you speak that your breath just stinks. I've got the perfect solution for you, girl. Oh yes, I do. I am still blown away by this because I didn't think it actually worked and it is amazing. Like this trick is insane. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go and buy yourself some peppermint oil. So you know like essential oils, like lavender oil, rosemary oil, peppermint oil so you know you can buy it in like boots a chemist a pharmacy like health shop you know you can get essential oils in any of them kinds of places so most essential oils you can't digest unless you mix it with something else like coconut oil or almond oil or something but there are a number of essential oils that you actually can digest you know straight like pure and um, so what you're going to want to do when you're brushing your teeth so you're going to have your toothbrush you're going to have your toothpaste already on your toothbrush and then you're going to get the peppermint oil and you are literally just going to put one drop one drop, no more, one drop on your toothpaste and then just go and brush your teeth and come back and I guarantee you, you are never going to feel cleaner and fresher in your mouth. Like holy moly crap a moly. When I first done this, I, I couldn't believe it. Like I was shook. I was shook. I never felt so fresh. I never felt so clean. And like, I just felt like my teeth had had such a deep cleanse because peppermint oil is actually antibacterial and antifungal, so it's amazing. I would highly, highly, highly recommend that tip for bad breath. So the next tip I have for you guys is probiotics. Probiotics are gonna be your best friend, your bestest friend. I cannot stress how important it is for you to be taking probiotics every day. Probiotics will really help with your smell down there and they will also really help to avoid infections and stuff like that. If you're unfamiliar with what probiotics are, Probiotics are basically live bacteria and yeasts which are good for you. So bacteria that's good for your body and they're especially good for your digestive system. So probiotics can help keep your good bacteria and your bad bacteria a balance to help ensure that your body's working the way it should be. They're especially amazing if you're on antibiotics because antibiotics often like rid rids our whole body of good bacteria. So probiotics like help, you know, ensure that everything is balanced and you know, working how it should be. So the next tip I have for you guys is all about vaginal sweat sweating every part of our body sweats every part of our body sweats and especially when it's really hot like in the summer like we're currently in Ireland is especially hot this year it is insane I feel like I'm in Spain so especially in the hot months or if you're on holiday or anything you know the way it can get very sticky and sweaty and just you can feel quite gross down there I have the perfect quick solution for you so obviously if you've already showered that day you know and you're going about your business and maybe you've got to go somewhere but you're feeling all sweaty and gross and sticky down there but like you don't have time for another shower like you're not going to have five showers a day are you like that's just silly so the best way I advise to do this is what I do anyway is I like color coordinate my face cloths so I use gray ones for my face and then I'd use like I have white ones that I'd use for like down there so basically all you're going to want to do is get your face cloth you know go into the bathroom you can just like wet it under the tap you know get some warm water or cold water or whatever you want to use and literally just have a quick freshen up it will literally only take you a minute and it makes you feel a hundred times better you know it just really freshens you up and you just feel so much cleaner and it's just a perfect little thing to do if you're out and about or if you're about to go somewhere but you don't have time to jump in the shower or if you're on holidays it's just an amazing little tip to help you freshen up so yeah so the next tip I literally cannot stress enough like I physically cannot stress this next tip enough so if you are somebody who's engaging in sexual intercourse or you're having sex or whatever it may be you need to always 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 pee as soon as you're finished having sex you don't understand how important this is if you don't pee as soon as you're having sex the chances of you catching an infection are extremely high especially like a uti a urinary a urinary tract infection so you got to be peeing after sex you've got to pee after sex it's so important so important i cannot stress it enough so the next tip i have for you guys is in regards to sweating and this is going to be our best friend yep this bad boy so no it's not a pad it's a panty liner okay so this is literally amazing like this works wonders so this trick can work for either your underarms or for your boobs I know girls with bigger boobs do tend to get a lot of sweat like in the bra and I do too but I don't think I get it as bad as someone with like a lot bigger boobs than me would get because like I don't have like huge boobs you know I've got pretty average sized boobs so literally all you're gonna want to do is if you want to put it on the inside of your top literally just cut a small section of like you know how big your top 
top is and just stick that to the inside of your top and this is just going to ensure that it's soaking up all the sweat instead of giving you sweat patches so the panty liner will actually be catching that sweat to ensure that you aren't getting them huge sweat patches because girl I don't know about you but like sometimes I just get hella sweat patches and it's hella embarrassing like Hella. And then same thing goes in your bra. You could actually probably just stick the whole thing in your bra and um, cut it a little bit if it's too big and just like stick it to the inside of your bra to wherever you sweat. It's normally like at the bottom. Well, for me anyways, my booba was like sweats at the bottom of my bra. So I'll just stick a little bit in there. And this again is just gonna soak up all the sweat and ensure that like you're not feeling sticky and all that stuff. This tip has literally saved me on so many occasions, but I would definitely stress to use a panty liner and not a pad because a pad would be very obvious, especially Especially like under your armpit or anything a pad would be very obvious whereas panty liners are so thin like look how thin that is like you can hardly see it so if you cut a little circle or a little square of this like you're not even going to see it you know what I mean so yes okay so the next tip I have for you guys is clothing so what kind of clothing you're wearing you wouldn't probably even realize this but you don't understand how important this is whatever you do don't wear jeans or tight fitted clothing every single day. This is one of the worst things you could be doing. Um, tight fitted clothing is also one of the biggest causes for ingrown hairs because if you think about it, like if you're wearing jeans or tight fitted clothing and it's like squashed up to you, like it's like tied to your skin, the hairs have no room to like come out and breathe and grow. Like they literally cannot come out and grow. So they're forced to grow back into themselves, if that makes sense. So the best way to do this would probably be like wear loose breathable bottoms like for five days out of the seven and then for one or two days wear your jeans or whatever you want to wear but um you need to try and like wear loose breathable bottoms more often than you're wearing tight fitted clothing because it also just allows your vagina and that whole area to breathe because when you have it all clogged up and it's like tight to your skin like things get very suffocated you know and it can't breathe your skin physically cannot breathe so whether you want to wear tracksuit bottoms you know flowy pants pajama bottoms if you're in the house like every single time I'm out if I'm wearing jeans or anything the first thing I will do when I get in the door is take jeans off or tight fit clothing because you can even feel like when you're wearing that kind of clothing for a period of time like everything kind of gets sore and like walking and you can just feel that everything is like <gasps> like claustrophobic you know so it's super important to let your area breathe so another tip that i suppose we could kind of mesh into our last one is that you need to ensure that you're removing wet sweaty clothes as soon as you're done so just say you're working out whatever clothes you work out in you need to ensure that as soon as you are finished you need to be taking them off like you can't be like sitting around in your sweaty clothes and like you know just chilling for a while a few hours later take them off because if you're sitting around in wet sweaty clothes you're just giving your body an environment to create infections and for bad bacteria to grow and for yeast infections and trush and all them kinds of stuff so it's so important that you're removing wet clothes sweaty clothes as soon as you possibly can so my next tip is for if you do find yourself with some razor bumps and you know you're feeling itchy and sore and irritated and you're like how do I get rid of these they're doing my goddamn head in like we've all been there we've all been there tea tree oil is amazing absolutely amazing for this tea tree oil again is antibacterial antifungal and tea tree oil is perfect to apply on razor bumps and it really helps calm them down if you put um, tea tree oil on your razor bumps by the next day like if you put it on at night they will have significantly gone down tea tree oil is also amazing for spots it's just an amazing all-around product again you can get tea tree oil in boots or drugstore or any pharmacy or chemist or anything like that a health shop as well so yes so the next tip is in regards to how we wipe ourselves after we go to the toilet and you're probably sitting there like Jessica okay you've just gone too far this time I think I know how to wipe myself Jessica I'm not a child but you'd be so surprised at how many people wipe themselves wrong so if you're somebody who does it the right way I do apologize but there are so many people who don't know how to wipe themselves or they aren't aware that they're doing it wrong so you want to always 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 ensure that you're wiping front to back never ever ever under any circumstances wipe from back to front because if you're wiping front to back you are taking the bacteria that's coming from your colon and mixing that up into your vagina which is the worst thing you could do because the bacteria in our colon is going to give us infections in our vagina and that's the way it is so if you're wiping back to front and you're getting infections a lot of the time I guarantee you that's why it's really bad for your body to be wiping back to front so always ensure that you're wiping front to back baby girl oh yes front to back like a windscreen wiper front back front 
Fuck. <laughs> so the next tip I have, I know I did touch on this in my shaving video, kind of, but basically it's what kind of underwear you're gonna be wearing. So you want to ensure that you're wearing cotton underwear more times in the week than you're wearing your sexy little tongs. Like I know we love our tongs, girls. I love my tongs anyways. I don't know about you, but like if I could wear tongs all day, every day, I would. Like I, I love them. I find them super comfortable, but it's so important that you're going for your cotton underwear more than you're going for your tongs. So you wanna be keeping your tongs for special occasions. Okay? Occasions. Um, so cotton, what cotton is going to do is going to let your vagina and your whole area breathe. If you're wearing things like polyester and all these other types of fabrics, most of them fabric fabrics the fabrics aren't breathable and it's suffocating your vagina, it's making your vagina claustrophobic and the hairs can't breathe, the skin can't breathe, nothing can breathe. Because I'm somebody who does love wearing tongs, you know, and I wouldn't just wear a tong once a week, I'd probably wear a tong a couple more times than that, I will still ensure to wear cotton underwear more, but if you are wearing tongs, I would ensure that you get tongs that are like this so I don't know if you guys can see that but there's basically like so many holes like there's just so many holes like there's holes everywhere throughout the whole underwear and this is just going to let your area breathe and um, it's just going to ensure that it's not clogged up and claustrophobic so if you are opting for tongs I would try get tongs that are more breathable and stuff like that and um, pure silk is also meant to be really good and breathable and stuff but who the hell can afford pure silk I know I sure can't so you know just go for some you know tongs with the holes. So the next tip is for when you're exfoliating your vulva, your vagina. Um, so basically the best thing to use when you're exfoliating down there is coconut oil and brown sugar. Um, so you just get some coconut oil, mix some brown sugar in it and you just create your little own exfoliator. Um, this is amazing because you're using all natural products as our vagina is such a sensitive, delicate area. You know, it's best to ensure that you are using natural products so you know what you're putting down there and stuff. When you are exfoliating down there though, you wanna make sure you're being a lot more careful and delicate than you would be when you're exfoliating your arms or your legs or anywhere else because the skin on our vulva and our vagina is extremely delicate so you're not going to want to be like Ugh, you know just like a gentle little scrubbing motion you know what I mean you're not going to want to be too harsh because that will bring them nasties around yeah nasty so guys that was my feminine hygiene tips i hope you guys enjoyed this and maybe learned a thing or two from it maybe if you would like me to do more of these kinds of videos in the future definitely do let me know down below because you know i'd love to do that for you guys if you're interested so yeah i cannot wait to see you all in my next video and i love you all so 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 extremely much Mwah. bye bye friends